Hey, this is a little bit of a follow-up video. Uh, and, uh, one of my viewers had asked me uh, a question about how to measure the frequency response of a, uh, a little audio amplifier that was part of a kit he was building. And it got me thinking that uh, it might be an interesting topic for a video. And it kind of grew into uh, kind of talking about measuring the frequency response and even in looking at the gain of a simple common emitter amplifier. So I figured I'd just review both of them here. So here's the simple amplifier I'll be working with. It's actually built up on the, the board right here. And uh, this is what the circuit looks like. It's a very simple common emitter amplifier. Okay, uh, We've got a couple of bias resistors here that uh, set up the, the bias voltage for the base of a 2222 transistor. I've got uh, some of the voltage readings here. We'll go verify that. Um, and then uh, that sets up kind of the base bias. I do have a, an emitter feedback resistor here to kind of stabilize the bias and make it kind of independent of uh, the current gain of the device. Okay, and then bypassing that uh, resistor so that you know, to, to uh, bring the gain up. Uh, without this capacitor, uh, the gain would simply be the ratio of these two resistors, or about four and a half. With uh, this bypass, now the gain is really a function of the current in the device. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And, uh, and the load resistor here. So these are some of the bias voltages that we get. So we'll get a, almost 700 millivolts across this resistor here. That kind of sets you know, the current, the bias current that we're going to be working with. And uh, we'll, we'll calculate all the, the gain and uh, figure out, estimate what the bandwidth would be uh, based on you know, the low frequency cutoff set by this capacitor or the high frequency cutoff set by that capacitor. And, uh, and then we'll actually go measure that as well. So. Uh, we're going to drive the input of the circuit with uh, just a simple function generator. I'm loading the function generator down with a, a 50 ohm load. So um, that ensures that uh, the voltage that I get coupling into the circuit, the circuit has a very high impedance, is not going to get influenced by any minor changes in the impedance of uh, the circuit uh, over frequency. And then uh, the output is just going coming out here. We'll look at it with the scope. Um, so couple of quick little things for our analysis here we can go take a look at um, you know, just the bias conditions here to make sure it all kind of works uh, we take a look over on the, uh, the circuit here and I can go down here and probe uh, the positive power supply uh, that's right at 5 volts okay that's what kind of we expected to have here let's look at the base the base here looks like it's uh, about 1.28 volts and if I uh, look down over here at the base that's right there that's a uh, 1.28 volts we look at the emitter, that's uh, right here, there's about 0.682, okay, and if we look at the uh, collector bias, and uh, that's right over here, that's right around uh, 2 volts or so, okay. So uh, when I measured these earlier, um, there was at 1.99, it's just 10 millivolts different, uh, 685 millivolts and 1.28 volts. So we can very, pretty easily calculate the, uh, the current through here. Okay, I would just measure 2 volts and I measure, I measure 1.99, so we're basically roughly uh, 300 microamps, right? 5 volts minus 2 is 3 volts you know, across uh, 10K, that's 300 microamps of current. From there we can calculate uh, some of the parameters that are necessary to figure out what uh, the gain of this circuit would be with this, uh, with this bypass here. So uh, kind of a, a basic uh, parameter you measure for or you can calculate for any of these uh, Bipolar devices is a something called a thermal voltage, and it really comes down to a couple of you know a Boltzmann's constant, charge of an electron, and the uh, absolute temperature. Okay, this number really comes out to be 26 millivolts at uh, room temperature. Okay, and that's called, called the thermal voltage VT. The GM or the transconductance of this transistor, okay, is basically equal to the collector current divided by VT. Okay. Uh, the transconductance basically says for any change in voltage that we apply here, okay, that's the change in collector current we're going to get. That's what the transconductance is. So that's just IC divided by VT. So in this case, it's going to be about uh, 11.6 millisiemens, okay. Um, and uh, so the gain, essentially, of this transistor amplifier, again with this guy bypassed here, uh, is essentially GM times RC. Okay, if we look that over here. It's actually minus GM times RC, okay, so 10K times 11.6 millisiemens, or about uh, minus 116, minus because it's uh, inverting, 
Okay. Another way to express that is uh, our collector resistor divided by the emitter resistor, or the I should say the equivalent dynamic uh, emitter resistance, which is really just one over GM. Okay, and it's kind of a neat to express it this way because when we look at uh, looking at frequency response, we kind of want that parameter. Okay, because uh, when we start looking at frequency response, we'll say what's going to limit or going to change the gain of this circuit at high frequency and at low frequency. Well, at high frequency, this capacitor, you know, ideally is just going to look more and more like a short, so he stays out of it. But at high frequencies, this load capacitor here at 220 picofarads is going to start reducing the load impedance at the collector. So the upper 3 dB point is when the capacitive reactance of this guy is equal to the resistor, the load resistor here. Okay, so that's easy enough to calculate. Uh, the high frequency corner will be about 1 over 2 pi 10k times 220 puff, or about 72 kilohertz. The low frequency corner, uh, you might say, well, it's this 47k and 2.2k. Well, that's really not the case, because the gain set up, as we kind of mentioned over here, the gain is kind of RC over RE, small RE, dynamic uh, emitter resistance, equivalent emitter resistance. So it's kind of the output resistance of the emitter here. And uh, if we calculate that out, that's just 1 over GM. That's about 86 ohms. So that's the, that's the resistance that the 47K is going to start working against to reduce the gain. So, uh, so the way we calculate that is the low frequency corner or the high pass corner is going to be 1 over 2 pi, 47 mic times... Uh, 86 ohms, about 39 hertz, and we can go verify uh, all of these things. So uh, we've already kind of verified the uh, the DC characteristics uh, here. Let's go take a look at uh, some of the other characteristics. So right now I'm probing uh, the signal at the input here. You know, let's say let me connect up the input. Okay, so that's coming from my function generator through this. Uh, there's a 50 ohm termination. Okay, that's getting coupled in through this capacitor into the base of the circuit. Okay, and then I'm probing that on channel one on my scope, and then uh, I'm probing the collector output on uh, on channel two of the scope. So we look over up here at the scope. Let's kind of turn my intensity down here. Okay, there I can very easily see there's my channel one input right there. Okay, and this is channel two right here. That's the output. So we can see channel one is sitting at uh, 20 millivolts of division. Channel two is at 500 millivolts of division. So we can see that uh, channel 1 is not quite uh, 20 millivolts, so it's actually about 17, 18, about 17 and a half uh, millivolts peak to peak, where the output is uh, just about, uh, actually just a little over 2 volts peak to peak. And if you do the math, 2 volts divided by about 17 and a half millivolts, that's a gain of about 115 or so, and that's about what we would calculate, okay, by, uh, by running this calculation here, so, uh, so that all kind of works. So now what we want to do is take a look at, well, you know, what are those uh, corner frequencies? How do we measure that? Okay. The way we can measure that is just adjust the input frequency to the circuit until the output falls by 70.7 or falls to 70.7% of its value. So if we're looking at 2 volts peak to peak, what we want to do is adjust the frequency such that the output falls to about 1.41 volts peak to peak. Okay. So uh, the nice easy way to do that is, uh, let me turn off channel 1, I can put up some voltage cursors right now, so the voltage cursors there are showing 2 volts, and I can take and adjust those voltage cursors down to about uh, 1.4 volts or 4.1 volts, and I'm just going to kind of do them kind of in a balanced way here. So there's about minus 1.41 volts, or excuse me, 1.41 volts. So now if I adjust my uh, frequency of my, uh, my function generator, and watch that. Let me kind of crank this up to about the right frequency here. I hope it's a little bit too high. Let's go about here. As I crank it up in frequency, let's uh, adjust the scope, make it a bit faster so I can see uh, the waveform here. Okay. And let me keep adjusting that up until the amplitude gets to right about that value. Okay. It looks like that's probably right about it. If I adjusted the vertical position here, I'd probably get that. Uh, it's pretty close right there. So whatever frequency that is should be our upper high frequency corner. And uh, with the scope I can also do a quick little set of cursor measurements here to look at that. And uh, let's kind of adjust uh, cursor positions here to kind of look at the rising edge and rising edge here. And we can see the measurement is about 71 kilohertz. And 
I think we had estimated or calculated that it should be about 72. So uh, certainly that's, uh, that's very close and certainly very reasonable considering the fact that uh, I haven't considered uh, tolerance of any of these components and they're probably not all exact values. So that's uh, a really close result and predict, you know, basically pre what we predicted the high frequency corner to be. Now the low frequency corner, we just have to go through the other, do just the opposite. We want to go back to uh, and measure and kind of start running the frequency down. Okay, and let's kind of slow the scope way down here so I can go see see the waveform. Okay, and we want to slow that down until. So if I go lower and lower in amplitude, we can see that signal is getting smaller and smaller. We want to adjust it so that that is sitting right at 1.41 volts. Okay. And that should be uh, probably right about there or so. Okay. And uh, again, we can go and make that uh, same frequency measurement here. Okay. And let's uh, move these cursors. Okay. Let's see. Try to do this uh, without looking through the camera. A little bit easier here. All right, and let's see, it looks like uh, we're probably, uh, let me get that adjusted here about right. Uh, that looks like that's probably pretty close, okay, about 38 hertz. And what did we calculate? We calculated out it should be about 39 hertz. So um, so we just kind of verified that, uh, you know, for this simple one transistor amplifier circuit with these component values, we should have, uh, you know, gotten a, low, a high pass corner of about 39 hertz, and that's about what we measure. A, uh, a low pass or a high frequency corner of 72 kilohertz and that's about what we got as well and uh, basically the way we measured that is just by looking at uh, the output on the scope you know adjusting its voltage to be at the 3 dB point which is 70.7% uh, .7 of uh, the value in the middle of the band okay and we set that up with the cursors and we had just uh, adjusted the frequency from the function generator uh, until uh, the response went down to that value. So uh, anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, just a quick look at uh, a simple uh, you know, single transistor amplifier, some of the parameters that you'd use to, uh, to calculate the gain and frequency response, and, uh, and then a measured look at uh, some of the results of that. So again, comments are always welcome. Thank you.